Hello everyone and welcome to another really, really awesome and important game from the penultimate round of the 2022 Tata Steel Chess Masters. It's uh, Fabiano Caruana versus Magnus Carlsen and uh, if Carlsen uh, draws this or wins this, he is the winner of the uh, this uh, year's edition of the Tata Steel Chess Masters. Uh, as we still don't know, uh, Daniel left the tournament and even if Fabi wins uh, this uh, this game, uh, then Magnus gets a free point uh, in the last round against uh, Dubov. Unless uh, there are some talks that if Dubov tests negative, then he can come back and play against Magnus in the final round. So we still don't know what, what's happening there. We'll probably know tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, return to the game as it's quite an exciting one. So uh, old uh, rivals, uh, they've played the World Chess Championship match in 2018 in London, if you guys remember, and they will repeat a line they played it there, but not for, uh, for a lot of moves. So Fabi with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, Magnus replies with c5 as he did uh, in every game in their World Chess Championship match. We have knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. Again, we have the Inez Medino Rosolimo attack, uh, and g6 by Magnus. So uh, he, th th this worked very well for him. This is what he sticks with. We have castles and now bishop to g7. And now the first uh, two times when uh, Fabi played Magnus in the World Chess Championship match, he captured uh, on c6. But now he goes for c3. Uh, and also uh, it, it's different than the third time they played. I think that's game five where rook to e1 was played. Uh, so th those were the attempts from the World Chess Championship match. But here Fabi tries c3, and here we deviate uh, from the match. We have knight to f6, rook to e1 now, defending the pawn, and here Magnus Castle. So sort of inviting white to play e5, but that's not really good, because after e5 and knight here, the knight is, well, much better placed on d5 than on uh, f6. And if you play something like d4, for example, captures, captures, uh, black will challenge your overextended center, and black will be... Well, even better here. If knight c3, we can even play bishop to e6. So uh, there's that. So after this uh, castles, we have d4 by Fabi, striking in the center right away. And now d5. We have e5 and knight to e4. Uh, and now, okay, you could uh, capture on c6. This is the, the, the most common move. But Fabi goes for bishop to e3. Obviously, he prepared something very special for Magnus here. So c captures on d4, c captures, and now queen to b6. The queen is developed with tempo the bishop is under attack and now uh, usually bishop captures on c6 is played but here Fabi goes for the extremely rare queen to e2 he defends the bishop and he asks Magnus what is your plan I'm not going to tell you what my plan is so Magnus continues developing with bishop to d7 a nice score for the bishop you've connected your rooks next you can play a6 move the queen maybe b5 and so on maybe double rooks on the c file uh, all depends on what white plays so here bishop back to a4 uh, and now uh, we have rook a to c8. Interestingly, you'd think you have knight captures on d4 with a double discovery here, but uh, you really don't have for bishop captures on d4, your queen is hanging. So you have to uh, pay attention to that. So here, rook a to c8, Magnus just continues development. And now there is a game where h3 was played, but here we have knight to c3, just developing a knight. And it is now as of move 13 that we have a completely new game and it's Magnus to move. So Magnus plays knight captures on c3. And it makes sense. Uh, you force white to capture with the B pawn, and now this is a, this is a backwards uh, C pawn now, and it's going to be maybe a bit difficult to defend. So queen back to D8 by Magnus now, preparing to push those queen side pawns and the bishop back to B3. Uh, we have knight to A5 going after the bishop, and here Magnus doesn't want to capture the bishop. He will only capture the bishop if the rook moves. If the rook doesn't move, then you don't want to capture. You give white the uh, the, the semi open A file. Uh, but here Fabi does play rook A to C one as it does make sense you want to uh, at some point play c4 and now if magnus captures the bishop here you will connect your pawns and then you will have even more support for for the c4 push uh, but this is interestingly exactly what magnus goes for he plays knight captures on b3 we have eight captures and now queen to b6 uh, returning the queen to the uh, b6 square going after the b3 pawn and now queen to a2 fabi nicely defends it and only now we have a5 so uh, uh, of course, it's uh, evident that Fabi wants to play c4, but by playing a5, Magnus actually stops this, because now if you go c4, or rather he doesn't stop it, he even uh, invites it, because now if c4, a4 maybe, and it's a really crazy position where black is threatening to create a pass pawn already on b3, uh, and if you capture here, then you no longer defend c4, so then you can capture on c4, so it's really, really crazy. So after a5, Fabi first goes queen to a3, he attacks the weak e6, 
seven pawn. Magnus defends it, and only now uh, he goes for c4. So he thought that the queen, being an a3, would ha would be. Uh, more advantageous for him. So here Magnus captures, D captures on C4, uh, even though A4 is still an idea here, but now Magnus prefers D captures on C4, B captures, and now Queen to A6. So what do you do? The C4 pawn is attacked, you have to play something, Fabi pushes the pawn to C5, and it's not ideal, uh, as the bishop, uh, the, the bishop is here hitting the D4 pawn, so uh, it's not the greatest of structures, because Magnus plays bishop to C6, and now you have a hole here on D5, and it's not going to be easy for white to, to advance this so uh, it's hard to say will, will this pawn mass in the center be stronger or will the past a pawn uh, or maybe some other past pawn on the queen side be stronger so here rook to b1 uh, with some ideas of kicking the queen further back with rook to b6 uh, and here magnus goes a4 uh, there's also the very interesting b5 that Magnus didn't like. Uh, the idea is you sacrifice a pawn uh, for the moment, c captures some b6, you allow this alpassant, and now after e6, for example, uh, d5, the, the, there's no way to keep the pawn. Black can just easily win it. He can double rooks on the b file and win that pawn. So here, white would have to give up the pawn. We're going to capture here, and now we would have this pass pawn against this pass pawn. Uh, with, with perfect play should be equal. Uh, but okay, after rook to b1, we have a4, and now we have rook e to c1. Uh, rook to b4 would also be very nice for Fabi, but he decides to play rook a to c1, and now Magnus plays rook c to d8. Also, b5 still an idea, but he decides to bring the rook to d8, uh, and now comes knight to d2. Yeah, and here, uh, rook to b6 is kind of preferred, uh, because after rook to b6, uh, Magnus has to bring the queen all the way back, uh, and then, uh, well, the, the queen is just, uh, the queen just occupies a lesser square, uh, because here, if you go queen to e2, which of course you can, then we just kick the queen back, uh, rook to b2, we are gonna play queen to a6, and now we repeat, so if, if uh, you know, uh, but obviously Fabi not very much interested in a draw here, uh, but an uh, another thing after rook to b6, yeah, you could just bring the queen queen to a8 and then the, the the game continues but Fabi played knight to d2 and this allows Magnus to actually infiltrate the position with the queen because d2 square is now yeah, much much better so queen to e2 now rook b2 isn't really doing anything uh, and now how do you play this it's a really difficult position where there only seems to be one uh, decent move for white uh, and that is knight back to f3 but this is something that we've discussed many times uh, that um, th there isn't a player in the world that will just admit his previous move was bad so here by moving the knight back you basically admitted that you no longer have any advantage and that you now uh, agree that the position is equal you've just given magnus a very strong square uh, the point of knight to f3 is that the bishop cannot capture if bishop captures then uh, first we play rook b2 we kick away the queen and now you don't really have this um, queen a6 because we play g captures on f3 and now white is definitely better there's uh, a lot more to play for here the, the rooks will easily collect both of these pawns and uh, it's just a much better position for white so what you will have to do uh, after this uh, knight to f3 move you're gonna have to play something like f6 and then the game continues but it's incredibly incredibly sharp however after queen to e2 fabi did not bring the knight back he played f3 which makes sense as the bishop is here on this occupies this beautiful diagonal it's a move you definitely want to play also you prepare maybe knight to e4 in some lines uh, but um, it's actually a move that also loses the game for fabi or rather brings it very close to a, to a losing point so feel free to pause the video and try to find this move that magnus played while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, wonderful idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, of course, the move is Rook captures on d4. That's the good stuff. Uh, point being that after Bishop captures, we're going to capture the Knight on d2. We've given up the exchange, but we've... Um, uh, we've dealt a crippling blow to white's uh, central pawn mass, and it's not going to be easy for white to play this, as you'll see. And once Magnus played this rook captures on d4, the entire Twitter uh, went crazy. It was really, really wild. So bishop captures on d4, there really isn't anything better. Queen captures on d2, and now rook to d1. And okay, situation on the clock, uh, 15 minutes for, for Fabi, 21 minutes for Magnus, and we're only at move 28. So 12 more moves are needed uh, for time control to be reached. So queen to f4 now, and now Fabi plays queen to b4. Uh, here, 
if you ask the engine what, what can white even play here, the engine will just give you rook to d3, rook to d1. We can double rooks on the d file and hope for the best. There really isn't uh, all that much you can do here. Uh, because even though you're down the exchange, uh, you're controlling the, the pawns here on the queen side with your light square bishop, you're going to win this pawn uh, at some point. So that's not really an issue. Uh, and uh, well, at some point, you can even play rook to a8. You can start pushing this past pawn if the queen moves. So black has a lot to play for, whereas white is... Um, uh, well, definitely not spoiled for choice. So here, queen to b4 by Fabi. And now, uh, what can Magnus play? And Fabi lost quite a lot of time here. He's already down to four minutes. Magnus says 21 minutes on the clock. Uh, and here, he could go rook to a8, but that's uh, th that's uh, really a forcing move. He just plays e6, and he says, all right, you figure out a plan. You spend your time as you're very, very uh, much low on the clock. Uh, he also could play bishop captors on e5, but that's an, that's an even more forcing line, and Fabi was counting on this and probably spent some time. But here, you just allow white to nicely double up rooks on the... Um, uh, or even rook to a8, you can now double rooks on the d file, rook b to d1, and you've given uh, white something to do. However, here after e6, uh, again, Fabi has to figure out the move, and he plays bishop to d3. Bishop to c3, he offers a queen trade, uh, but that's uh, not the way to go. Again, just doubling rooks on the d file, that's the only thing white has in this position, and even that is questionable. So here, Magnus happily trades queens, we have queen captures, and now what do you do? Do you capture with the bishop or with the rook? Because because the bishop kind of guards this e5 pawn, uh, uh, but let's discuss a rook captures on b4. So if rook captures on b4, we're gonna play bishop to f8, and now it doesn't seem like white has a uh, <laughs> white has a good move. Uh, how do you how do you defend this pawn? It's uh, not all that uh, uh, doable because if uh, you try with the rook, for example, we can play bishop to b5. If you try something like uh, bishop to d4, then we play rook to d8, and again. It's uh, very, very hard to, to, to play this. Uh, there are some very cool lines here, like bishop captures, then we pick up the rook here, so you're going to have to play something like rook c4. But now we start pushing our pass pawn. King f2, we're going to play rook to a8, put a rook behind our pass pawn, and now... Well, if something like rook c to c1, we're going to play a2, and this is just a monster pass pawn. Once our bishop comes to, to d5, it's going to uh, guard this pawn, guard this pawn, and we're just going to have a really, really uh, good game. So what you would have to do after rook captures on b4 and bishop to f8 is, in fact, rook to d6. This is what Fabi would have to commit to, uh, but it's like, uh, okay, for this bad position, I have the exchange, and now I, I even have to give back the exchange. I'm, I'm, I'm not uh, going to play that. Uh, but even this magnus doesn't have to capture on d6. He can play rook to a8, and now after some like king f2, we're gonna play a3, and pretty much the same idea. We're gonna put the bishop on d5 to control the a2 pawn. For example, king e2, a2, we're gonna play bishop to a1. Now bishop to e7, we continue bringing the king into the game, and only then will we capture here and, um, well, just continue pushing for, for our advantage. So Fabi doesn't like rook captures here. He plays bishop captures on b4 instead. Uh, at least, uh, well, he, he keeps this pawn, so this pawn uh, remains blockaded, but now Magnus captures on e5. We have bishop to a3, now comes a bishop to f6. Uh, we have a king to f2, Fabi has to make moves very quickly, but he makes uh, very, very precise moves. Bishop to e7, uh, now uh, putting putting pressure on that c5 pawn, uh, and now you have to be careful. Now even uh, ideas like b5 are possible, because you're not going to be able to capture the pawn as the bishop will be hanging. So here uh, we have rook to b6, preventing the, the advancement of the b uh, of the b pawn and now rook to c8 by magnus you could also try something like rook to d8 uh, but uh, again for example rook captures bishop captures we're going to play rook to b2 now we play f5 and okay the game continues but um, uh, it's sort of an accomplishment for fabi not for magnus so magnus just keeps the pressure there's no need to trade anything off just uh, you know for, for the sake of trade and now we have rook to d2 by fabi and here uh, fabi is under a minute and he still has five more moves to make before reaching time control. So here we have f6, uh, f4, and now e5, offering a pawn trade. Uh, you, you could also try to waste more time with h6, then g3, and then capture, uh, but Magnus captures right away, so uh, offers a trade right away. Fabi captures, Magnus captures, now rook e2 goes after the pawn, now rook f8 to check. We have king to e1, and now we have rook to f5, defending the pawn, and now Magnus will improve the position of uh, his pieces as much as he can, and then he will start bringing this king into the game, uh, if possible, via the light squares, as uh, Fabi only has a dark square bishop. So here we have rook to b1, 
This is move 40, and uh, Fabi has uh, reached uh, the time control. He is now given additional time. I think he had like four seconds on the clock when he made this move, uh, but it's not that like it was uh, you know intense or anything. He just made a very a very calm, calculated uh, approach to this. So here, Magnus starts pushing. We have e4. Now comes rook to c1, and now bishop to h4 check, uh, forcing Fabi to weaken himself on the king side. g3. Now bishop to g5 attacks the rook. Rook to b1, and now rook to f3. Uh, attacking the bishop here, so bishop back to c1, offering a trade of bishops, uh, but for the moment bishop to f6, there's no need to, uh, to, to trade anything, we have rook back to b6, and now we have rook to f5 by Magnus, Th there's also a straightforward win with bishop to c3 check, but it requires a, a lot of uh, calculation, uh, but after king d1, you can play e3, and that's it, the white really doesn't have a move, if you ever capture this, then you allow a3, a2, and that's game over, and other than this, for example, king here, we're going to play bishop here, pick up this pawn, and that's also one way to win. Uh, so after rook b6, Magnus plays rook to f5, he goes after the pawn this way, now bishop back to a3, defends the pawn, and only now Magnus starts bringing the king into the game. King to f7, we have rook to f2, offering a rook trade, and now even though Magnus could capture, he plays rook to f3, if you want to capture, uh, I want to get my pawn closer to the queening square, so here rook captures pawn, captures king f1, and here Magnus played bishop to d4, and he was in this position on move 49, that Fabiano Caruana resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So to give you a, a, a brief summary of uh, of how th this would go, uh, for example, you have to play something, rook to b1, not a lot of things you can move, uh, we're just going to bring the king into the game, and that's it, for example, g4, king to d5, we're going to play h4, king to e5, and after something like rook to b4, putting pressure on the bishop, uh, even bishop to e4, and now you can't stop a bishop to d3, as the pawn covers this square, and after something, let's say bishop to c1, we just deliver this check, king to e1, we're going to play f2, check king d2 and f1 queen, and of course now it's completely winning for black. Uh, so yeah, that's why after bishop to d4, Fabio resigned, and another brilliant victory uh, against not just a former uh, member of the 2800 club, but also a former World Chess Championship challenger, uh, Fabiana Coruana. So here, Magnus manages to pull off a win uh, in a line that uh, was used in the World Chess Championship match, but here, uh, Fabio obviously tried to uh, maybe... Th throw Magnus off guard with that uh, deviation, but Magnus was very much prepared for it. And so we don't forget, these are the standings after the penultimate round. Uh, so Magnus leading the tournament with 8.5 out of 12. With 7.5, we have Mamedyarov and Raport, uh, then with 7, Anish Giri, uh, Yesipenko with 6.5, then with 6, we have Karyakin, Vidit, Van Forest, uh, and Fabiano Caruana now after this loss, with 5.5, Yang Shishtov Duda and Sam Shankland, Pragyananda with 4.5, Grandelis with 4, and Daniel Dubov with 3.5, who has left the tournament. Uh, so now, uh, it seems that uh, if uh, Daniel does not appear in the final round, Magnus is just uh, just wins by default, because he will have 9.5 points, and closest Mamedyarov and Raport can uh, reach uh, is eight and a half, but if uh, uh, for uh, you know somehow Dubov appears, uh, he's tested negative, and then he can play again if it's even you know according to regulations, uh, and he beats Magnus, uh, then well then we could have a tie. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that's a big if, and uh, I, I don't think anyone knows anyone uh, anything about this yet. So, uh, you know, you guys will be uh, informed uh, at some point tomorrow, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Magnus gets his long-awaited victory in Classical uh, against uh, Fabiano Coruana. Uh, I would like to thank Deepak Bhatt, Robert Aratun, uh, Vladimir Ardenkovic, uh, Sakashi Ranade, and uh, Isaac Pinol uh, for uh, Katadao for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of this spectacular event uh, until it finishes. Uh, so, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.